Hey, Douglas, is that a storm coming? You could say that. It's Richard. Yeah, man. I mean, you cannot imagine how much the weather today can have an impact on our important IT services. I spoke to a real-world customer, and he actually can talk about how VMware actually helps him deal with these kind of big storms. So, Chris, I'm happy to see you're here in Las Vegas. You went yourself to uh, a real-world deal with an earthquake in Japan. How was that from an IT department's perspective to experience that? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously the personal effect was really what, what was a challenge for us. And the, the fact that we were able to use SRM to, to be able to take our minds off of the IT aspect and, and the business, you know, concentrate on keeping the business active during the disaster was really helpful for us. So it was a, a lifesaver, not only in money savings for keeping the SLA for our customers, but just being able to take our minds off of that and deal with the more personal aspects of uh, the aftermath of the earthquake. So, yeah, I hope of course that no one will experience this themselves. But mm -hmm. I'm really do. I am very curious about <laughs> the actual data behind it. How long did it take in the end to really yeah. fill over and that kind of stuff? Uh, I would say uh, around an hour actually. Um, we had other systems that were still on physical. Some of our tier one apps that we haven't yet virtualized that took around the time frame of like 24 hours for that from the RTO's perspective. So. Um, SRM really helped us out and let me kind of do the work from home. I didn't even need to come into the office, surprisingly, um, to be able to do all the failover process. So it was, uh, like, again, I said, it's, it was really easy for us to do. And the in that hour process. time, how many VMs were you able to fill over that SRM only, managed? Only around 10, but these were 10, like, were the really high SLA that uh, for customers in America and so forth. So even with the time difference, we were able to deal with it and not, not break our SLA, which was great. So. And are you now going to older tier one apps that actually weren't protected by SRM? Are they now therefore going to move to virtualized now, software? Now that we've proved the value of uh, SRM, of course, yeah, we're going to be moving more apps to the to the product. And also, we're because of the effect of the disaster, I was able to get on the beta for the version five. So I'm waiting for the release of version five so we can really do some more advanced functionality and have a real robust uh, solution. So. Okay. Well, I'm very happy that you guys survived through this ordeal. And thank, thank you. you for talking to me. Thank you. So, Lee, not only large enterprises are affected by these types of issues, but also small and mid-sized businesses. What are we doing to help those customers? So one of the things that we've announced with SRM5 is uh, a built-in replication platform of our own, vSphere Replication, which is really available for every customer out there, whether they've got storage arrays, low-end storage, or even direct attached storage. So from a performance perspective, direct attached, low-end SANS, what does this look like? I mean, does it really run well? Yeah, absolutely. It works asynchronously, and we can be as aggressive as 15-minute recover point objective, and we can go right up to 24 hours. So that will pretty much encompass most of the workloads that the customers in this segment would want to run. What about uh, really small businesses that might not even have a second site, for instance? So if you haven't got a second site, then traditionally you had one option, which was to get a second site and build it. Now we've announced the you know, DR to the Cloud program, which is a service provider model working with SRM5. And what that allows the really small customers to do is to actually DR protect their VMs to an alternate data center that belongs to the provider, almost like on a monthly cost basis. So that's a massive benefit for them because now they don't have to build that second data center. They can just choose a provider, choose a cost model that they're happy with, and they can start to protect their VMs to that provider's data center. And what about um, use case? I mean, I think people are using SRM for more than just uh, disaster recovery. I know I have customers contacting me, leveraging it to uh, provision their production environments into Lab Manager, for instance. Anything else this is being used for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, VMware customers are traditionally you know, ahead of the curve anyway, and they started using SRM back in 2008 for data center migration projects, data center collapse projects. So one of the things we've done in SRM5 is try to introduce workflows to make that easier for them. So we've introduced things like planned migration, which allows them to move applications between data centers with zero data loss and essentially shut the virtual machines down, force the synchronization of the storage and then bring the application back up in an application consistent way at the other site. And then most importantly, we've made the ability to bring the applications back again very, very simple with automated failback. You know, so that was always a pain point for us in the past. There was a way to do it. People weren't that happy with it. So we've kind of now filled that gap and completed that circle, if you like. And now you can do automated failback of applications between your two data centers. All right, so when's it available? So it's going to be available very shortly. So it's available at VMworld right now to see in demo and using the labs. Uh, we've already done uh, the announcements around SRM5. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, you should see it on VMware.com to download. So keep a lookout for it. Great, be sure to go to VMware.com and uh, keep your eye out for the updated SRM. Thanks a lot, Lee.